Hello everyone, this is Kilodale, back with another recording. This is Stenson, part 2. I first want to apologize for not finishing the Stenson story earlier. The first part of Stenson was uploaded on August, uh, the, August 28, 2013. It is currently October 13th, 2013. There is very little to no excuse why I didn't finish this recording, and I'm really sorry. The only one thing I can take comfort in is that no other reader for Doom Pie's channel has uploaded one, so pretty much all everyone else has failed at the same time that I have. So anyway, I'm going to try to get back into the swing of things, recording stuff for you, and without further ado, I will continue reading where I left off. Pa, I'm ready. Applejack shouted as she skidded to a halt on the barn. There's my Jackie, he said with a smile. You ready to hit the Brayburns? Course I'm ready. Applejack paused and raised an eyebrow at him. You mean the apples, not my cousin, right? Pa chuckled. Right. Good, I'll get my baskets. Hold up there, Pa said. I have something for you. Applejack turned to see him pull a brand new Stenson out of his saddlebag. I know how much you love mine, so I decided to get you your own. What do you think? Applejack's eyes widened. Applejack's eyes widened. She had to remind herself to breathe. My very own Stenson? She gasped. Your very own. Applejack squealed and left at her father, wrapping her four legs around his neck as far as they would go. Oh, thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Anything for my little Jackie. Pa replied as he placed the hat on his daughter's head. Run along now. I'll see you out in the orchard. Applejack? She stopped brushing her mane and turned around. Apple Bloom was standing in the doorway. Hey there, Applejack said, putting on her best smile. Something the matter? Apple pawed the floor. I was just wondering if I could ask you about something, she muttered. Sure thing, sugar cube. Applejack answered. What is it? Well, I was wondering, Apple Bloom started, why'd you decide to leave Sweet Apple Acres and live with Aunt and Uncle Orange? Applejack blinked a couple of times before turning quickly to face the mirror and continued brushing her mane. I already told you. I, I wanted to taste the city life. But why? asked as she walked closer. But there's no reason, Applejack said quickly. I, I just wanted to change the scenery. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Y you don't sound too sure, Apple Bloom said. I'm sure. Don't you think you're brushing your mane a little too quickly? Applejack threw the brush down next to the mirror. Apple Bloom, I've had a very long day, and I don't need any pony questioning my answers. I went to Manhattan to see what it was like. And when I didn't like it, I came back to the farm. End of story. Applejack picked up the brush and ran it fiercely through her mane, while Apple Bloom stared at her. Well, fine, the filly said at last. Granny Smith said to tell you supper will be ready soon. I'll be down in a minute. Apple Bloom sighed and walked out of the room. Applejack watched her go out of the corner of her eye, her brush coming to a halt mid-stroke. The farm pony led alongside and buried her face into her forelegs. It was yet another ally to add to her growing collection. How are you doing, Jackie? Pa asked, wiping the sweat from his brow. Great, Pa, Applejack said, forcing her mouth to smile. She understood now why her father liked the Stenson so much. The sun showed no mercy to ponies, and the wide-brimmed hat kept the sun out of her eyes no matter which way she turned. You're looking a little beat, Pa said with a laugh. Uh-huh. Applejack replied, with a vehement shake of her head. I'm ready to handle everything. Pa smiled at her, but this smile quickly vanished as he looked at the sky. Was that a storm today? he muttered. Applejack followed his gaze and gasped. A wall of black storm clouds drifted towards the farm with the occasional flash of lightning. What, what do we do, Pa? she asked. I want you to head home, he said. Tell your mother I'll be there soon. I have a couple things I need to take care of over here. But what about the apples? Applejack asked. That storm could cause a lot of damage. Apples grow back every year, Jackie, Pa replied. Promise me you'll run straight home. But, Pa? Promise me. Applejack's mouth hung open for a minute. I, I promise, she said. Pa nodded. I'll see you when I get home, he said before turning and galloping away. Applejack began a journey home, passing tree after tree, bristling with fruit waiting to be bucked. Pa and Big Mac worked so hard to take care of the trees, and this storm was going to ruin it all. 
The words of her promise echoed back in her mind, but she had no intention of honoring them. Not quite yet. It would only take a moment to buck a couple more dreams, and then she would head home. Supper was unusually and uncomfortably quiet, and Applejack excused herself quickly. She lay on her bed and stared at the ceiling, wondering if perhaps any pony was looking back at her. Turning her head to the side, her gaze rested on a beaten-up Stenson. Still lying on the lamp where she'd left it, no matter how long she lived, she would never forget the day her father had given it to her. It was a gift from a loving father. She turned it into a hat of a liar, a pony unworthy of the love of a stallion who had come from. Applejack heard a knock at the door. She turned to see Apple Bloom poking her head in. Hi, sis, she said. I'm sorry about making you upset earlier. Applejack closed her eyes and let out a long sigh. It's nothing. Apple Bloom, I was, I was just in a bad mood, that's all. Apple Bloom took this as a good sign and walked inside. Applejack, why don't you, Big Mac, and Granny Smith talk about Ma and Pa? Applejack didn't notice how close the storm clouds were until the first raindrops had struck her orange coat. She walked quickly, telling herself she still had time. And thus ends part two. I would like to apologize right now for the fact that it took me like, what, over four, three months to get this thing out? The recording, I, I recorded it all in like one session, but the editing process took me forever to do. Um, and it would have been longer, but I want to get this recording, at least, at least this part out. There's more to the recording I still have, but I'm going to work on a new system of recording so we don't end up with, you know, a four-month sabbatical in between the parts. I mean, this isn't Sherlock. I can't just do that. Okay, well, anyway, that's this part of the story, and, um, there you go. This has been Kilo Gel doing a reading that took way too long. Uh, I have no idea when the third part's gonna be out, but let's hope for the best, eh? If you know any really good tips about how to get stories out, tell me. Thanks, bye.